So we're 10 years since the Great Recession, and oftentimes economists use the decade after a financial crisis to really try to think about what we've learned. The basic idea we put forward in our research that we've been doing over the last 10 years is that credit supply expansions operating through household demand are an important driver of business cycles. Now, this idea basically rests on three main pillars. The first main pillar is that credit supply expansions end up fueling boom-bust cycles. Uh, this is a pretty controversial idea. Most macroeconomists who study business cycles argue that business cycle fluctuations, booms and recessions, are caused by what I would call real factors, such as technology shocks, such as income shocks. Whereas we're basically saying, look, what really seems to be a major driver of economic fluctuations is the activities of the financial sector and their willingness to extend credit. The second main pillar of this credit-driven household demand channel is the idea that these credit supply expansions tend to operate through the household sector as opposed to through the firm sector. In particular, what you see in these episodes when credit supply is expanding is you see a lot of signs that it's really household demand that's picked up. So for example, you see a boom in employment in the construction sector or a boom in employment in the retail sector. You see all of a sudden a lot of jobs coming up in the retail sector, think about restaurants or grocery stores. The idea is that if credit supply is disproportionately going to businesses, then in that circumstance you should see employment going up in all kinds of industries, not just retail, not just grocery stores, and not just construction. But that's exactly where you see these job gains concentrated. The other way that we show that these credit supply expansions are really operating through household demand is by looking at consumer prices. So consumer prices tend to go up a lot during these credit booms. And again, that's another piece of evidence that what's really happening is that household demand has been, in some sense, instigated and basically is rising uh, quite a bit during these household debt expansions. Um, the third main pillar of this credit-driven household demand channel is about the bust. You know, why does the recession end up being so severe in the aftermath of these credit supply expansions, these increases in household debt. We point to a number of factors. The first is a big decline in household demand. That's really what usually instigates these recessions. A lot of people, for example, point to Lehman Brothers in September of 2008, but in fact, the drop in household demand began much earlier than that, even started in the summer of 2007. So the initial sign of trouble in the economy is usually a rise in default rates on some debt. The financial sector then pulls back credit, and you start to see a big drop in demand, especially among households that have a lot of debt. That alone is not enough to get a huge recession. You need other frictions, other amplifying factors. So for example, um, a banking crisis. So household debt increases oftentimes predict a banking crisis, which will, of course, hurt economic activity for a variety of reasons. When these household debt booms happen, they generally are leading to a lot of employment in the construction sector, in the retail sector. In fact, research by my colleague Eric Hurst basically shows that people in, in cities where there was house prices were going up a lot during the 2000 to 2007 period actually were likely to leave say, community college in order to go work in the construction center or work in the retail sector. When the bust happens and those jobs disappear, a lot of those people don't end up going back to college and end up becoming unemployed. And so for that reason, these legacy distortions can end up having a negative effect on GDP going forward. A lot of researchers have treated banking crises or financial crises as just, in some sense, falling from the sky. They just happen, the economy's stable, and all of a sudden Lehman Brothers collapses and causes the recession. What we show in our own research is that banking crises, financial crises, the overall recession happens after an unsustainable rise in household debt. In some sense, these booms sow the seeds of their own destruction, and as a result, we need to understand the boom as much as the bust. In fact, you could even go further. You need to understand the boom in order to make sense of the bust. 